This is the installation and basic operations training video for the Buck Scientific Model 310 Air GC, specifically designed for undergraduate teaching and academic experiments. Utilizing its built-in air compressor as the carrier gas source, this gas tank-free GC will separate most hydrocarbon materials with detection limits on the catalytic detector in the 1000 ppm range or so. Ideally suited for most organic synthesis or organic chemistry projects. Once the system has been removed from its blue shipping container, it is a very simple matter to plug in the GC itself into a 110 volt outlet, plug in the serial data cable to connect the GC to the PC via the 9 pin serial port, Load the Peak Simple software from either floppy disk or CD, depending upon what version you are using. And then simply make an injection of a volatile organic compound and look at the chromatography on the screen based on the parameters that you have set. The 310 Air GC runs normally off a 110 volt 10 amp circuit. It comes equipped with the catalytic combustion detector and a three foot HACEP porous polymer column. This can be changed out for other pack columns or even short capillary columns for specific experiments. The interfacing between the computer and the GC is done with a nine pin serial cable which is connected to the GC and to the 9-pin serial port on the back of the computer. You will either have a floppy disk or CD-ROM containing the Peak Simple software. And this is installed on your PC to allow control of the parameters on the GC. Depending upon your operating system, click on Start, Run, and select the setup from the system. Once the software has been fully installed on the PC, turn on the GC power supply switch in the right left corner of the system. And from the display switch, we can see what our temperature is with the switch in the down position. With the switch in the up position, we can see what our carrier gas, or in this case the air compressor, is generating. Approximately 5 psi pressure which with a 3 foot 8 inch pack column is approximately 10 milliliters per minute. To change that, we can lift the lid, press and hold the upper or local set point button, and make adjustments to our carrier gas to either increase or decrease the separation of peaks. When you make a change in the carrier gas flow, wait approximately one minute for the gas pressure to equilibrate throughout the system. At this point, we can double click on our Peak Simple icon. The system will initialize and establish communications between the hardware and the PC. With the Peak Simple software maximized on your screen, one of the first things you will do is set a temperature program for your separation. We click on Edit in the upper toolbar, go down to Channels, and with the Air GC system, Channel 1 is our active control channel. Make sure all three check marks are selected for active display and integrate. The detail screen basically shows some defaults for display parameters and the remote start should be clicked
to allow you to start the GC from the push button on the instrument. The temperature file allows us to define either a temperature program with a ramp or to add our own program. In this case we will start at 125 degrees centigrade, hold for one minute, and ramp at 10 degrees C per minute till we get to 175 degrees centigrade. This is our maximum operating temperature for the air GC because at prolonged exposure to temperatures above 175 degrees with an air carrier gas, the 20% oxygen will begin to decompose the porous polymer packing of the column. The event file allows us to control the chromatography or any hardware and basically it is a good idea to start with an auto zero at the beginning of the run. The post run screen allows us to define a file name and we will call this gc-100.chr for our binary chromatogram file and if you select the auto increment feature it will automatically give the next file name gc101 followed by GC102, etc. This eliminates the need for the student or the teaching assistant to have to rename each file prior to running the chromatography. We don't have a component file yet, but we will do so after running our standard. And notice as you leave the cursor near any of the options, an on-screen help will appear to guide you through the operation. The scale displays on the far left axis. The plus scale will zoom into a specific region. The minus will zoom out. And the icon in the middle is the auto zero icon, which will zero the millivolt reading of detector as seen in the upper right hand corner. At this point, we're ready to begin our injection and take a look at our chromatography. using the 10 microliter syringe supplied with the Buck Air GC and whatever test mix you create, be it alcohols or low molecular weight solvents, it is recommended not to inject more than one microliter of any material to avoid overloading the column or the detector. Many of the gas chromatography textbooks will give you good guidance on the techniques for making a proper on-column injection. As you insert the needle into the GC, you'll meet some resistance as you hit the head of the column. You press the Let Start button, make your injection, hold your thumb on the plunger for a few seconds to allow the sample to leave the needle and enter the GC, and then remove the needle. As you can see on the screen, the faint blue line is our active chromatogram being processed during the run. If we want to adjust our display, we can position the cursor at the baseline and we can drag it down to maximize our screen. We can use the plus icon to expand our scale as needed. And we can keep track of the chromatography as the materials are being separated along the column and detected at the CCD detector. We can see our methanol peak as it's come out, which will be followed shortly by our ethanol and then our isopropanol peak. 
along the x-axis on the bottom, we can change our scale to expand or contract our time period. We can monitor our actual temperature, both on the front of the GC and through the display within the Peak Simple software. When the chromatography is complete and the system returns to the standby mode, we can see that our primary components are marked by little red circles at the tops of the peaks. To create our component file, we right click on the top of one of the circles and select add components and left click. You can see this will draw an integration bar that will allow us to define the identification of the material. And again, we put the cursor on the top of the peak, right click again, and select Edit Components. And we go ahead and we fill in our component table. So this is peak number one. And the identification of this material is methanol. We want to calibrate, we can input a unit as percent or parts per million. And we repeat with all the components, right click, left click add components, right click, left click edit components, and component two is ethanol. To see the results of our analysis, we click on View from the upper toolbar, End Results, and we can see in Channel 1 our two components that we've identified based on this retention time and with these areas. While you have access to peak height and peak area, peak area will be the most consistent for quantitative data. By running several standards and using the concentration of the standards with the integrated peak area, you can create a calibration curve in Excel or a linear regression calculator and then analyze an unknown and calculate the concentration in the unknown. If you would like to save the components that you've just identified, click on Edit, Channels, and under Channel 1 Components and save that component file under a specific name that can be retrieved later with these retention time windows. That concludes our installation and training video for the Buck Model 310 Air GC for basic undergraduate education and simple organic chemistry projects. Thank you very much.